Good evening, gang. How's everyone doing? I really hope and pray that uh, you've been having a wonderful day, that your week has gone well. Uh, most of all, I pray that the things that I've been posting are impacting you, that they are touching your heart. And I really pray, especially with what I posted this morning, that it really touched you the way it did me. Uh, as I was reading this story, I've read it before, but as I was reading it, I was reminded of how the Lord is our banner, that he is our protector and he is our shield. And he is that, and all we got to do is ask and he's there. And what I stated on there, I'm asking for prayer on. I can't go into detail right now, but it's got a lot to do with this mediation and, and some other things. And I, I'm just asking for your prayers that we make the right decision. Speaking of which, God put something on my heart um, not too long ago. And I'm doing some digging on it, so I'm asking for your prayers, especially in this. Uh, what I, I, I've posted here three different days of devotion, of, of the daily devotions from Pastor Joe Foch of Calvary Chapel, Philadelphia. And each of these devotions are based on Ephesians 5, verses 22 through 24. And I want to read that with you. Please don't mind me here. You ever have, I don't know what to describe, because I'm dealing, I think I'm dealing with the tail end of congestion. So please don't mind me. But Ephesians 5 verses 22 through 24 states this. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now, I want to read a little further on this, because there's a lot more to this that conveniently gets overlooked, that conveniently gets ignored. Verse 25 Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself." And it goes on to say about this, but verse 33 especially rings true. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Paul wrote this for a reason, people. Okay, I'm, as I said in this, I'm not claiming to be an expert, a marriage expert. Far from it. I've only been married, it'll be this June, 17 years. Okay, and I'm still learning things. And I'm sure each of you are. If you got to listen to these and, 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 and watch these uh, videos, you hear the same thing pretty much from Pastor Joe, which I applaud him for. But the very first one, he says something very important that I'm doing some digging on, and I ask your prayers on this. Uh, I've been reading or, or uh, following uh, two very brave Christian women in my opinion, uh, once one has has a blog called Wartburg Watch, and the other one has one called the Watchkeeper or Watchkeep. Uh, the one's name is Dee Parsons, and the other one's name is Amy. And Amy happens to be affiliated with a Survivors Network uh, of you know those abused by priests. And she's been exposing, they both have been used by God to expose some things within Christianity, uh, with, within the church, that needs to be dealt with. And one of the things that I have been seeing 
is a lot of Christian women are divorcing and leaving their husbands because of what I think is a very valid, uh, two very valid points. A very, uh, and I know that there are some that don't believe in divorce at all, that there's no biblical grounds for divorce. There is. Read, if I were you, I would read Matthew chapter 19 in particular because the Lord speaks on it here. Verse 9 in particular of Matthew chapter 19. And I would read Matthew and Mark alongside, and I believe and, and I believe that the Lord knew that this particular grounds would expand. And I also believe he knew that a very significant biblical grounds for divorce would include abuse. And I'm calling physical sexual abuse. And if you want to know, I'm doing some research on this, and I, I will get back to you. Uh, I do have a link here that I want to share with you on some things in that area about this particular issue, about abuse of husbands. There's 22 Bible verses in particular, and I'm going to share them with you. But I just felt led of the Lord in this area because I've been seeing a rise in this. I've been seeing a rise in how the church is covering this up not every church but how the church is covering this up and it's covering it up very badly pastor joe in the first one states something very clear he says that when it comes to submitting wives submitting to our husbands that he's saying here that this does not mean that it's a slave does put relationship when he mentions this in this passage when he mentions about submitting yourselves as unto the Lord. Okay. I want you to very carefully listen to that first devotional and see what I'm talking about. Because it really surprised, it pleasantly surprised me. Because it says here, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Now, what he's talking about, there's a different type that, that when it comes to submission. He's saying, bear in mind that your husband is not God. Your husband is not Christ. And if he asks or demands that you do something that you know goes against God's word, guess what? You've got a right to more than disobey him. And one of the things he was mentioning that really, Pastor Joe was mentioning that really got me, was he was mentioning if your husband insists that you look at porn with him and take part in that activity, and when he insists, and I'm, I'm, I'm adding this on, when he insists that you perform those sexual acts that you see in, in those pornos, you've got every right to resist and not do it. That's what's been going on big time in this area. And... When I read this, I was very shocked. I read one article from a man who was at a at a, um, a women's retreat or something, and women came up to him. There was one woman holding a baby that told him that this very thing was happening to her, and it broke my heart. I wanted to cry. Matter of fact, I think I did. I was bawling. And I got to try to find the article um, so I can share it with you. I'll try to do that later. But I believe that the relationship between husband and wife is a very sacred one. And I believe that it has been marred so badly because of sinful acts like this. And the church is not handling it in a biblical fashion at all. Uh, I read one article, uh, I've read some articles recently uh, about one woman who divorced her abusive husband. And... Uh, Emotion, uh, when you emotionally abuse your spouse, that is abuse. But there was, I suspect, other things going on. I've, I've read not just that, but a woman who divorced her husband because he was looking at porn. And I believe that is a type of adultery, people. I firmly believe that. And I've, I, I know a woman named Shelley Lubin who was a porn star, but she accepted Christ as her Savior. 
and she speaks out against porn and how degrading it is. And it is. Uh, Some of the the stuff I've seen, I I, I admit it, it's disturbing. I, I had to... I had to ask the Lord to forgive me, and that's part of why I'm I'm sharing this. I felt led of the Lord to, to delve deep into this because I'm starting to see, especially in these areas, how the, the it's it's affecting Christians for believers within the body of Christ, and the church is not doing enough on this. And again, I'm going to say this that. Uh, that for a husband to go looking at this stuff or even a wife to go looking at this that's a type of adultery and you need to repent of it and you need to start treating your spouse your husband and or, or, or wife with the respect that they deserve this passage is talking you know that from verse 22 to 33 is in chapter 5 of Ephesians and it's talking about how husbands and wives are supposed to relate to each other And one of the key things here is that this marriage, this this whole idea of submission is not a slave despot relationship. That is not what marriage is about. That's one of the first things I've learned. Another thing that I've learned, and, and it was interesting how they were speaking on how God created woman from Adam's side. I've always heard it was the rib, but created her from here. And one of the things I learned in that area, when God did this, he didn't create woman from his head to be above him, from his back to be behind him, from his thumb to do this to, or from his foot to be trodden on. But he created her from the man's side to be alongside him, to be his equal. We're different, but we're equal. We're physically different man and woman, but we're still equal in God's eyes and there's there's qualities about us women that you men wouldn't want I think if you experienced what premenstrual syndrome is like and cramps and getting your period you'd be in the hospital if you knew if you experienced childbirth you guys would be in the hospital too but I believe very firmly after what I've, you know, listened to from Pastor Joe and also what I have read in this area, that we as the body of Christ, we need to be examining this particular issue. We need to be reaching out to women who are victims of spousal abuse. I, As I said, I've been seeing a lot of issues and incidents in this area, and it's breaking my heart especially to see how the church isn't handling it properly. They're not handling it in a true biblical fashion. And they're causing serious damage to these, to, to these poor women and, and, to, and, and to any victim, whether male or female, of this. And that's why I'm doing this. And, and as I put here, I welcome feedback. And I, I, and I want to basically include right now some verses that speak out against abusive husbands. Colossians 3 verse 19 states, Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. That's from, I believe they call it the English Standard Version. Okay, let's, let's, read, let's read from Scripture. Uh, I'm going to do... It says, Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. That's the King James, but I, I see, do not be harsh with them. 1 Peter 3 verse 7 speak something on this as well. He says this, Likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and being heirs together of of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. The English Standard Version says, Live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life so that your prayers may not be hindered. Ephesians 5, verse 25 through 29 says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church 
to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish in the same way husbands should love their wives as their own bodies he who loves his wife loves himself for no one ever hated his own flesh but nourishes and cherishes it just as christ does the church there are others here there that there are others here that speak volumes on this uh proverbs 22 verse 10 drive out a scoffer and strife will go out and quarreling and abuse will cease interesting statement let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for god will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous romans thir uh, hebrews 13 verse 4 something to think about something to think about and if you read first corinthians 7 verses 12 through 16 it speaks in particular about if there just happens to be a situation where uh, you have an unbelieving spouse. And I kind of want, want to read that because I find it important. He says here, but to the rest I speak, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. But verse 15 speaks something very interesting here. It says, But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. I believe that this particular passage of scripture is not being honored with victims of domestic violence, victims of adultery and domestic violence, the very things I've described. And, and I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post this, I'm going to post this, this link so you can see these different verses and, and look them up for yourself. But most of all, my biggest prayer for all of you is that, that we as the body of Christ, we start reaching out to victims of adultery, of domestic violence, of spousal abuse, of, of, of sexual abuse abuse in this area because there's too much of it i've I, if you check if you check out um watch keeper and wartburg watch you'll see what i'm talking about it really i, I was amazed you know i i, I kind of thought because i grew up in that background that's why i'm speaking about this i grew up in that background i was molested by a baptist pastor from the time i was 14 till i was 16 I was also molested by a 12-year-old boy when I was seven. And I had such a low image of myself because of the unbiblical things I was taught that I almost married an abusive man. I praise God that I broke away from him. God helped me to break away from him. And there are women out there that, especially pastors' wives, who are bound in this. There's a, a ministry called Focus Ministries that deals with this very issue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to post the link for that here. It's Faith-Based Domestic Violence Help. And I'm telling you, it, it, is, it, it is really powerful to see that, that this is being done, that, that somebody is reaching out in this area. And I'm going to post the link to, to this ministry site. And I, I want to let you know that there that if you're going through this, if you're a Christian woman and you're going through this, and, and you are experiencing this, know that there is hope. You do not have to put up with this. Nowhere in God's word does it say a man has a right to hit a woman. Not at all. And I urge you today, if you are in this situation, get out and get help. Don't be afraid to do this. If you need to go to a different church to get help, do so. I've posted this link here so that you so that you can find this help. 
And most of all, I pray that if you know someone that is going through this, that you'll help them. Seriously. I pray this. Because it's badly needed. The more that know about this truth, the better. And I'm also here to, to say to, to any woman who's going through this that doesn't know Christ as your Savior, He loves you and He cares about you so much. Don't be fooled by the lies that says that, that, that God, God's not there, that God doesn't care about you, that there are other paths to heaven, that you need to do all these different things to earn salvation. That's a bunch of baloney. I pray that if you don't know Christ, that you will make that decision to come to know him as your savior today. That you will choose to let him into your heart to cleanse you of your sin. I've said this over and over and I'm going to keep on saying it until I can't do any more. John 14 verse 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Acts 4.12 states, Neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. In short, Jesus is the only way to be saved and have eternal life. Please don't let the philosophy of this world fool you. Jesus is the only way to heaven. He doesn't care what you've been through, what you've done, where you're from, or anything about you, but just let him in your heart. And I pray that you will come to know Christ today. And to the abusive husband that does not know Christ as Savior, I give you a warning. You better repent and come to Christ and forsake what you are doing or face God's judgment. And to the person that is abusing their spouse that says they know Christ, you better repent and ask for God's forgiveness and seek forgiveness from your spouse. And if they choose to have nothing to do with you while still forgiving you, but saying, I'm divorcing you, you better darn well accept it and you better not try any illegal thing against them. You better not try anything against them. That's straight for me. Because if you do, they have every right to take legal action against you. And for any pastor or for anybody in the church that does counseling, that is watching this, that is applying what I nathetic unchrist like nathetic counseling you better re-examine your counseling technique that's all I'm going to say I'm going to delve in further on this because as I said I'm going to do more research on this but as I close this I just pray and I ask that you seek the Lord in this area I really do I pray that you seek the Lord in this area. I have to go, but I wish you all a wonderful evening. You have a wonderful evening and a blessed night. Bye for now.